Welcome to the Art Studio Insights Podcast, where we demystify the creative process and exchange ideas with career-minded artists. We are your hosts, Adriana M.A. and Jackie Sanders. We are two emerging artists sharing for the advice and business lessons we have learned along our journey. So if you are not already, please go ahead and subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you will be notified when we launch a new episode every Tuesday. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about creating a series of artwork. So to start it all off, Adriana, what is the difference of creating an art series versus a body of work? So this is a common one. I've seen it used interchangeably out there and we're just going to put it, we're just going to settle this one. Some <laughs> put it to I'm rest. Just I'm just kidding. Um, but essentially, <laughs> you can think of as a body of work as the sum total of all the artwork that you consider complete. Really important. All those sketches and studies yeah. don't asterisk, necessarily asterisk. count. Yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. Um, it can span several decades. Uh, it can include a variety of styles, mediums, themes. You'll hear some people talk about their current body of work. So it's just a more recent thing, but it can still um, include a lot of different styles and, and things inside of it, right? Yeah, On exactly. the other hand, an art series is just a slice. It's just part of a body of work. So you're looking at a cohesive group of art, of paintings, artwork that generally shares three or more common threads. So perhaps they have in common inspiration. It could be the color palette, the style, the medium, the technique, the subject matter. It could even be the dimensions. Like maybe you have a series where everything is, I don't know, super tiny, right? Um, right. <laughs> and you could think of a series as anywhere from, say, three pieces to sky's the limit. Yeah, 7,000. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. For me, I'm like, I feel like personal, right? For me, I'm like, if I have at least five, then I can consider it kind of a mini series as yeah. opposed to a full blown series could be like 20 pieces or more, but they're both series. They're not a body of work. They're just part of it. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I feel like that's the one thing, especially for both of us where it's okay. If there's some element of a piece that you want to keep exploring, that it then grows from one piece into three, four or five that can be seen as similar, then like that's the start of a series. So like, what does creating a series look like with your process? <laughs> well, it depends uh, because sometimes it could just be sparked by something in a sketchbook from two years ago type thing, right? Yeah. But a more recent example would be um, most of the current work that I've been creating in the past year and a half now. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Um, yeah. has been part of the Exploring Heritage series in which I'm translating with paint memories and experiences related to my mixed heritage and the diaspora that I'm a part of. So um, I do often make paintings within subgroups or mini series that are part of the big one. So uh, some of those paintings are going to belong to, you know, kind of like a specific topic. So say, for example, I do one based on, you know, small homes, you know, tiny homes, uh, of my grandma's neighborhood, great grandma's neighborhood, et cetera, right? Then I may create several exploring that specific subject, right? But, but that being said, my current body of work also includes paintings that don't necessarily belong to a specific series. Either they never will or they just don't yet, and there might be more pieces added to them in the future and then they'll create their own series. But yeah, that's, that's essentially how mine work. How about you, Jackie? So yeah, I definitely work in series as well. I feel as though right now I have three relatively distinct series when it comes to my original artwork. Um, so the first one was called the Taking Control series. I did it about five years ago when I was in college. I don't necessarily think I'm going to continue exploring that series simply because the materials and machinery that I had access to in college um, was a key element in creating the final pieces. But maybe one day in the future, if I have access to them again, I will keep exploring those pieces. Um, but a lot of them were acrylic paintings that had light sculptures and mirrors embedded into them, um, which were super, super fun to make. And I really just love being a beginner 
in the creative process. I find that's a similar theme throughout my life and kind of a common thread that sparks kind of my pivot into a new series is I have a small idea that might be very different medium that I'm used to, and I just want to explore it. So the Taking Control series were um, light sculptures embedded within acrylic paintings. And then I have my Shadows of Influence series that started in 2019 um, that includes acrylic paintings with overhanging UV printed acrylic um, that also incorporates light and shadow, but more being imposed onto the painting rather than inside the painting. And for that yes. one real quick, Jackie, <laughs> um, when you're talking about the acrylic on top of the acrylic question, oh, yes. do you mean it's, it, would, would it be fair to say it's similar to plexiglass that's just like offset from the surface of the painting and then what's on the plexi kind of creates shadows on top of the painting? Anyways, just figured I would describe yeah, it for folks exactly. that might be listening. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really good distinguishing element. So it is plexiglass acrylic that overhangs on top of acrylic paintings um, that are on panel. And so it is a nice element, almost where these paintings become sculptures and blurring the line between the two, which is definitely an idea that I started exploring in my first series, the taking control, um, but then kind of brought into a new light while I incorporated more shadows. Um, and then my most recent series, the Beauty and the Breaking series, still includes abstract um, gestural marks as well as geometric lines, um, but in a really kind of a different format. It's paint on panel. There's no sculptural element per se besides the depth of the painting itself. Um, but it's been a really fun series, especially with that exploring size variations. So really challenging myself as a beginner of what happens if I explore this series as a six by six painting, what happens if I explore this as a three foot by three foot painting and really intentionally making it a series versus I felt like the first two looking back, it's easier to see, oh, these clearly go together. But again, when you're first starting out as an artist, you're simply making work that kind of is like an evolution of your most previous piece. You don't have, it's just like with life, right? Like everything makes sense in a line as you look backwards, but then you look forward and you're like, it's not obvious where you're going. So it's fun looking back at old pieces and old series and saying, oh, these are clearly an evolution into this next series. Yep. And I feel like the two that I'm exploring now, the shadows of influence and beauty and the breaking, it's really nice being able to dive into those individually. And then also now kind of bridge the gap of like, if you think of one as on the left side, one on the right side, what does that middle look like and like blur them together, which is a lot of, lot of fun. Yeah. And definitely those taking control ones, even though they're, they're oldies, but goodies, you can definitely see on your newest ones elements from your oldest ones. It's, it's really cool. Like if you put them next to each other, you can't tell. Yes, you can tell they're different series, but within the same consistent body of work, so. Right, exactly, which really I didn't cool. honestly really realize that until recently. Um, so I had them as part of my personal collection at my apartment, so yeah, I saw them, but having them recently in an exhibition next to newer pieces was, was really, really cool being able to see like the benefits of time, seeing that six year difference of how as an artist I've grown, but then still conceptually exploring a lot of the same ideas and how you problem solve differently at different phases of your art career, which is really cool. Yeah. And speaking of different phases of your career, um, when you're starting off, you may feel like working in a series may not necessarily be right for you, but we really don't want to discourage you from that. Uh, we want you to give it a shot. A lot of times, you know, at the very beginning of a series, you might just have one C's and that's OK. <laughs> you may just have like some random ones here and there, but um, we're, we're going right. to go into some things to consider uh, when it comes to, you know, creating a series. Right, exactly. And I think especially like so many artists start off doing series of different workshops, exploring a bunch of different mediums or if you go to the acad academia route 
like you take a watercolor class and a sculpture class and an oil painting class. Um, but I think that's a great way, like people naturally go to that exploration. And that is a great way to start any type of series. So like, are you considering a new medium or a new color palette that you want to explore? And then maybe challenge yourself to do X number of paintings in that medium. Or maybe there's like a personal story that you really want to convey. And then, okay, how many iterations can, of a painting can you make that explore that story? Um, something else you can think about are like, do you have set parameters that you want to stay in? So like all paintings will be done on wood panels and acrylic paint. How, how many ways can you interpret that rubric? So almost think of them as school assignment or a workshop assignment and then times however many paintings you want in a series and see what happens. Exactly. Um, so that I would add, so you can think of it as making a series, you could be challenging yourself to master a specific subject or technique. So maybe you're more into landscapes, but you want to learn more about the figure. Well, then maybe you just challenge yourself to try to make a whole series on the figure. And as with all with all these things we're sharing, it doesn't mean you have to share it to anybody, by the way, you right. just for you, um, as you, you know, learn more about what, you know, this new mastery you're trying to attain. Um, the challenge could be actually the volume itself. So maybe you always do uh, different florals, but you only do like one or two at a time and then that's it. You know, maybe the challenge is, can I make 20 at the same time? Not one at a time, but all at the same time. Yeah, that's a different good Different stages too. and, you know, see how I feel about it so that when it's time to complete the series, I'm literally completing 20, not two. And then do I make a third one? I don't know, right? Um, also, if you have a financial goal in mind, it's something to think about. So if that's the case, you would need to reverse engineer the amount and the sizes of pieces needed to reach that money goal. So you might say, I wanna make a series of 12 or more paintings and I want them to be valued at $4,000 or more. Great, so what As does that group. look like? Yeah, yeah, so you know, say it's a whole series and it's dogs, right? You wanna make 12 paintings or more of dogs worth $4,000 or more. Okay, now it's time to reverse engineer. What size are they gonna be and how many do you need of each size? Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like that goes into like as career minded artists, that's a lot of the conversations that you and I have and with other artists is, OK, taking the creative process, which is making a series of artwork. But then what mental shift do you need to have as a business owner, as an entrepreneur? So like planning for those various sizes and price points, I think is super important. Um, as we've mentioned, like you can make the series, okay, I'm making 20 12 by 12 paintings and that is it. However, when you think about from a business standpoint, from an art collector standpoint, there might be a, there's a huge benefit, honestly, in having various price points. So you can also accommodate for different budgets. Maybe you have one smaller piece that's $45 and then a piece that's much larger that goes up to $800, $2,000. Um, and giving your future collectors that opportunity to kind of support you in however they can, especially thinking long game with your business. Um, maybe you have a new collector and they really want to support you and they love your work, but they might not be able to spend $1,200 on an original painting, but they can afford a $200 painting and they can love that painting and have it in their home and think about you every time. And then three, four years from now, they can then say, you know what? I want, I have this painting for my living room and I love it. I want a new one for my office. And maybe then they can afford the $1,200 painting or more. So it really is nice having from a business mindset of making this series. Um, of course, you want to be able to do what feels right for the series or for the collection or for the medium that you're working in. But keeping that mindset of you are a business as well and offering those different price points is super, super helpful um, when approaching new collectors or bringing them into your creative process. Yeah. And as you mentioned that, I thought of another one too. Since art can be so personal, having something that's a little bit 
uh, on the smaller side of things, on the more affordable side of things, means that you know your studio visitor, your collector, can more easily gift it to somebody else, who Ooh, then yeah. may in turn fall in love with what you did and then come back and get something bigger. Um, but you know, without having that much pressure and commitment, you know, you don't you don't go to somebody's house and be like, surprise, <laughs> I got you this four foot painting that you've never seen and you don't even right. know who it's by and you've never seen their artwork. But you may get them a little card or a small, tiny painting and then right. kind of opening up the world from there. So yeah, that, that's another one. Especially when you're thinking about, okay, I want to make a series maybe for the Christmas holiday, for Valentine's Day, for the spring. Like if you're making a series with maybe a specific market in mind or specific holiday, that's a great thing to think about in terms of, yeah, you don't necessarily, as much as I think people would love to have your artwork in their home <laughs> as the common mindset of gifting anything to people. It's like, you think they're going to like it, but also what if they don't, you don't want to then burden them with like this big size commitment per se. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe they don't have the space for it. So anyways, just, just some things to think about. Yeah. Um, but let's, Let's go into the maths. The math standpoint. <laughs> the maths. Um, because there are several ways to tackle this and it may feel icky and scary. Don't don't let this put you off. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we're not conveyor belt production here, right? Um right. You, know, you are creating, we're talking about this about creating original artwork, not reproductions. Um but you also want to make a living out of this. So you, you do yeah. have to do the math at some point. <laughs> no way around that one. Um, I feel like there's two, uh, two main approaches. Uh, there, there's probably more, but there, there's two that come to mind. One of them is if you're thinking about it from a volume perspective, right? So you're like, okay, I got to create an art series. Okay, how many pieces do I want to create? So you figure that part first. You might say, I don't know, 20 um yeah. then you figure out how many sizes i don't know two sizes keep it simple and <laughs> how many pieces of each size i don't know uh 10 of each or 15 of the bigger one five of the smaller one bam right. and <laughs> once you do that then you can determine like do you have the supplies on hand for this and then you just roll with it right um so it's kind of like an initial math and then you run with it right um the opposite's almost a different opposite side of it is yeah. you think of it as money first, right? So you might say like our example of the $4,000. So you want to generate a certain amount of money or value uh, worth with them. Then you choose how many sizes. So again, let's say two sizes to make it easier. Um, and then how many pieces of each size. So at that point you might say, okay, all right, I'm gonna break this one down a little bit more. Um, I wanna make $4,000 worth of paintings this month. So I'm going to create two different sizes. I'm going to charge for the larger ones, 500 bucks a pop. Um, and for the smaller ones, 200 bucks a pop. Stay with the math here. So <laughs> that means keep it simple numbers, keep it simple. So that means that if you made four large ones, that's two grand and 10 smaller ones, that's two grand. Thus we have Grand, right yeah. um so, i can just see people in the car now being like math drawing it out in the air <laughs> hey if you're career minded you have some left brain in you needing this this is right doable. stay with me yes but, and if you do need it broken out in both of our blogs we will have the math laid out so examples. if you go to either one yeah. of our websites just like we talk about the end of every episode we'll have the examples so yeah it'll make will. a lot more sense when you see it sometimes <laughs> you will and then also with the value method do know you can adjust if you have a specific volume goal you can adjust the numbers accordingly because yeah. then you might say, you know, with the little example I just gave you, that's 12 paintings, right? But say you're stuck on the whole, it has to be 20. Well, you got to figure that out. You got to move some <laughs> stuff around to get that amount of volume. Maybe you need a third size that's smaller. I don't know. We're not right. going to go into that. But or maybe you realize that, okay, if I want to make enough. 20 pieces, then it's going to be more than four grand. Like yeah. knowing your pricing and that's a whole nother conversation, but knowing, okay, maybe you can hit four grand with 12. And if you want to make 20, if you well, keep going. want to go bigger in size, then sky's the limit. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. But the, the whole idea behind it being like, whether you go with the volume method or the value method, it's fine either way. This is just to help you from, from drifting, if you will, because sometimes we get involved this new series, we're in love and we just go for it, right? And we end up with seven different sizes because it's whatever you have in the studio or changing the materials because we ran out of stuff. This, this just kind of helps you from instead of drifting to kind of focus a little bit, because if you are intentionally making a series, then this takes some of that decision making stress out of it. Because right. once you have those pieces, you have those canvases, panels, paper, whatever it is you work on, ready to go. It takes that bar barrier off of, oh, I don't know if I have enough. Right? No, you already figured that out. And now planned ahead. Yeah, you can turn off the number part now and you just work and that's it. You know, do what's fun for you and you love your process and that's the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing, like kind of to wrap it up when it comes to making an art series is doing that pre-planning can be super beneficial. There's almost like two ways that an art series evolves. It's either organically because you started one piece, you evolved to the second piece, you then reacted to that and evolved to the next, and they all are cohesive, which is great and is something that is very magical when it does happen. However, to plan ahead for it can also bring a lot of comfort because like you were saying, you know you have the right materials, you know all of these use a similar color palette or about a specific subject matter. And you know, by the end of completing that art series, you will have a complete series. So both methods are totally fine, but sometimes the planning ahead may take a little upfront work, but pays off tenfold at the end, because then you can really just embrace the process and let your creativity shine as you're making these pieces without the stress of the business side, the numbers and working out all the materials. Um, and that way you can just let creativity find you as you're working on that series. So mm -hmm. if you haven't before, I would definitely challenge you to set parameters and challenge yourself to make a series, challenge yourself to a specific subject matter or size or quantity of pieces um, and see what happens. See how you like it. Yeah. And remember, you know, when it comes to the art path and, you know, mastery of a medium and mastery of subject, et cetera, there are no shortcuts. So might as well put in the work, get some, you know, have fun while you're at it and, you know, sit back, relax and enjoy once once you're finished with the series and you get to see these 20 beautiful things or however many you made and <laughs> how they talk to each other. And it's very satisfying. But we want to leave you with that for today. Um, you know, we hope that you enjoyed this conversation. As always, both of our blogs will be linked in the show notes where you can find episode notes, as well as a downloadable PDF of the art breakdown that we talked about earlier in this episode, as well as links to all of our other podcast episodes. Yep. And if you want to stay connected with us in between episodes, share what you have learned. Maybe you have a different method in which you could create an art series. If you'd like to share that with us, yeah. you can follow us on social media. I'm a May art across all platforms. And I'm at Jay Sanders studio on all platforms. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you later.